Good morning, students. So now in today's class, uh, I have to discuss that. Uh, for example, you have to see in Google. Uh, In a Google, uh, in a Google search, whenever you have to typing the particular keyword on Google Maps, uh, uh, Google search, so that word related uh, number of frequent uh, words you have to getting on a Google search. That is a frequently who are the users uh, continuously we have to type uh, that information you have to getting on a Google search. Why? Because that is a frequent word, uh, frequent keywords they have to using. Uh, frequent words they have to typing number of users. So that related words we have to display. Similar way, uh, here we have to define the pattern. Here we have to discuss with that uh, mining frequent factor, patterns. So in the mining frequent patterns, continuously, uh, which items are uh, frequently they are, which keywords you have to continuously you are using, that you have to represent it as uh, frequent item sets. In the frequent item sets mainly, uh, for example, uh, we have to consider the. Uh, in similar uh, in Google search, who are the you know, number of users we have to frequently type for keywords we have to represent it as frequent keywords. And a similar way, similar way, uh, we have to consider the in the shopping mall. In the shopping mall, uh, who are the customers are uh, continuously uh, they have to purchasing the particular items. Uh, that is, uh, we have to consider as frequent items they have to purchase. So, uh, how those items you have to uh, uh, purchase it by the customer? Uh, so that uh, those items you have to represent it as a one one item set. Uh, that is simply call it as uh, like uh, one box. You have to represent it the number of items. Uh, that is a, a frequent item set. So once you have to make that frequent item set, automatically most of the customers they have to purchase. So even one item is not, uh, they are not using the uh, the particular item, but uh, they have to purchase it, that item set. That is the uh, that is the way uh, you have to represent it in a frequent item set using the mining method. So here you have to use the different types of algorithms you have to use it, uh, in a, a frequent item set mining methods. So what are the rules you have to follow and uh, 
uh, here what are the strong association tools, what are the frequent item sets, those all we have to consider here. That is a uh, simply we call it as market uh, uh, market basket analysis. That is the MBA. Generally, you have to call it as market basket analysis. Uh, see here, uh, this is the example uh, shows. So this is the market basket analysis. Here you have to represent which items are frequently purchased by the customers. Uh, milk, bread, uh, cereal, uh, that is the customer one. Milk, bread, and sugar and eggs, uh, the customer two. And milk, bread, and butter uh, is customer three. Sugar and eggs is customer end. So here they, we have to consider milk and bread is a common item for that. Uh, by the uh, purchased by the customers. So that is, you have to consider as a uh, frequent item set, you have to, milk and bread, you have to represent it as uh, most of the uh, items. We have to consider as a um, market basket analysis. In the market basket analysis, we have to consider the rules and support and confidence you have to represent it here. Uh, for example, uh, similar way, you have to consider the another example uh, most of the people, they have to purchase the computer. At the same time, they have to purchase the software voice also. So that is the way you have to say that antivirus software also they have to purchase. So this is the computer and support 2% and confidence is 60%. That is the association role you have to call it as. Support and confidence of the two measures of the interestingness of the people. See this uh, diagram shows uh, frequent item sets and uh, closure item sets and association goals. Uh, generally, we have to represent it like this. Uh, uh, see here, uh, this is the uh, first one is uh, uh, let uh, uh, T equal to, that is I equal to I2 uh, I M, I1 to I M, this is item set. And D is the task relevant data we set up the database transaction. For the each transaction, they have the non-empty sets. And T is belongs to a uh, subset of T uh, I. Each transaction is associated with the identifier called a TID, transaction ID. Let uh, A is the set of items. Uh, a transaction T is said to be contained. Uh, a is a subset of T, uh, an association rule of implication of the form, uh, A implication to B. Uh, a is subset of uh, i and b is subset of i and a is not equal to phi. Similar way b is not equal to phi and a intersection b is not equal to phi. So these rules a, b and uh, implication to b holds in the transaction set d with the support s where s is the percentage of transaction, the trans, uh, percentage of transaction in d uh, that contain the a union b. Uh, let us uh, confidence, uh, you can say that uh, the rule A is implication has the confidence, C is in the transaction set D. Where C is the percentage of transaction is D containing A, and that also be contained B. This is taken by the con uh, conditional probability. That is the probability of the B per A, A that is represented as uh, confidentiality, uh, that is the conditional probability. Support A implication B. Now that is simply called it as P, uh, A union B and confidence we have to represent it as A implication B is as a P conditional probability of BTA. That is simply you can say that uh, which one is the minimum confidentiality uh, is called as strong and uh, minimum we have to represent it as uh, rather than uh, the values in between the zero to one. So let the K item sets, uh, we have to consider the computer and antiviruses, we have to consider uh, that is the occurrence of uh, frequency, uh, frequency of item sets. Not only here, uh, we have to consider the, you know, uh, not only here, we have to consider the uh, shopping malls also, who, which items are frequently, uh, they have to purchase it by the customer. Uh, that is also we have to consider here. That is the K item sets. In the K item sets, we have to purchase it by the most frequent items we have to purchase it by the customer. Uh, that is we have to consider as consider here. So based on that rule, so that is the association rule. Uh, confidence A implication B is uh, that is simply you can say that condition probability of B to A. 
support A union B by support A and support count A union B by support count A. That is, you have to consider that this is the uh, most frequent set of frequent item sets commonly denoted. You have to represent it with this. Generally, association rule mining, you have to support. Association rule mining, you have to support here. Uh, here you have to support association rule mining with the two-step process. The two-step process are mainly important. Uh, that is the first one is the uh, association rule mining can be viewed by two-step process. One is the uh, find all frequent item sets. That is the uh, first step. Uh, and second step is the generate the strong association rule from the frequent item set. Uh, this is simply call it as a two-step process of association rule mining. So here we have the considered association tool mining of the two-step process. Find the all frequent item sets. That is the first one. And second one in the generate the strong association tool between the uh, frequent item sets. That is the uh, final uh, the step process of the association tool mining. So here we have to consider the closed uh, frequent item set. So by, uh, based on this uh, two-step process, uh, uh, different algorithms you have to use to find uh, frequent, the frequent item sets for using the mining methods. First one is the a priori algorithm. This is a very important in expert point of view, as well as uh, in real-time environment, they have to use this algorithm, a priori algorithm. A priori algorithm generally, in a computer manner, we can say that which keywords are continuously uh, Typed by the uh, typed by the users that you have to consider as the frequent item uh, frequent keyword. Similar manner, who are the customers you have to consider in a uh, shopping mall? Uh, which customers are uh, frequently uh, purchased by the item? That is you have to consider as the a priori. Uh, that is also you have to use it uh, in that cases also you can use the this a priori algorithm. And similar way in computer uh, products, they have to purchase frequently. That is also you have to consider the confidence and the support. So here you have to use the main uh, frequent uh, item set mining algorithm is the a priori algorithm. A priori algorithm is find the frequent item set by the combined uh, combined uh, combined uh, candidate generation. A priori algorithm simply you can say that seminal algorithm proposed by the uh, Agrawal and Srikanth in 1994 by the minimum minimum frequent item sets for the Boolean association rules. This is a very important algorithm. In nowadays, they have to use this algorithm. Whenever you are using this algorithm, the period, uh, period knowledge, uh, knowledge of the frequent item set is properties. Mainly, we have to consider. A priori algorithm uh, is simply a priori property. Uh, all non-empty subsets of the frequent item set must be as a frequent. Here, you have to use the two-step process. OT, one is the join, pro, join action and second one is the clone action. Join step is the K item set is generated by joining with itself. Prune step, uh, C of K is the set of the L of K. That is the numbers uh, may, be, may not be frequent. Let us see the example. I will show you the diagram. This is the a priori algorithm. Uh, a priori algorithm finding the frequent set so combined by the candidate generation. Uh, see here, uh, this is the uh, frequent item sets mining algorithm. Uh, here you have to use the two-step process, join step and uh, two step process. Uh, I, will, I will see this example. So here you have to consider, this is the example. Uh, let us example a particular, um, all, all electronics transaction data branch. In that uh, branch, you have the, the transaction IDs. Uh, T1100 to T900. So totally how many transactions they have to uh, perform? That is the nine transactions they have to perform. In each transaction, they have to purchase the items, item IDs 
that is the I1, I2, that is the I5 in transaction one. And second transaction, they have to purchase item two and item four. And in uh, uh, third transaction, they have to purchase item two and item three. Item uh, item four transaction, item one and item two and item four. Like this way, they have to purchase from uh, nine transactions, I1, I2, I3. See here, uh, this is the uh, total items. So now you have to consider this, uh, how many uh, count, count, how many items? First, uh, item set one, I1, how many people they have to purchase? Uh, total nine, out of nine transactions, uh, so it's a supplementary count. On um, six, uh, six transactions, they have to purchase the item one. See here, I1, you have to consider that is the six people they have to purchase that item one and item two how many people they have to purchase that is the uh, purchased by the seven people they have to purchase the item two uh, item two but that is the count is simply seven and item three they have to purchase it the six people item four they have to purchase the two people uh, item four is purchased by the two people only Similar way, item five is purchased by the two people. So you have to write the supplementary count of that items. Now we have to compare the candidate support count with the minimum support count. First item one and item two, with the uh, supplementary count you have to represent it. Now generate the seat to second the item one and item two, how many people they have to purchase. Similar way, item one and item two, Three is how many people they have to purchase. Similar way, item one and item four, they have to purchase how many people? Item five. Similar way, you can write the item sets. So it's our supplementary count you have to note down here. See here, uh, this is the. So based on this one, based on this one, uh, item one and item two, how many people they have to purchase? One. And this is the second, uh, two, three, and four people they have to purchase item one and item two. Similar way, item one and item three, how many people they have to purchase the items? Uh, that are based on that, that counts you have to represent it here. Okay, clear? This is the counts you have to represent it here. Item one and item two. And it, these two items they are purchased by the four people. Item one and item three is purchased by the four people. Item one and item four is purchased by the one people. So now you have to consider here, which one is the uh, supplementary count? Which one is the more? That only you have to consider. That is the compare the candidate uh, minimum support count. So that is the Four and two, who is the count is you have to consider. That is the only those to those item sets only we have to consider. I1 and I2, I1, I3, I1, I5, I2, I3, I2, I4, I2, I5. That is the supplementary count, sir. With the four and twos only we have to consider. Which are the supplementary counts are zeros or ones you don't want to consider. Then after, now this is the uh, second item sets we have to complete it. Now we have to consider the three items, I1, I1 and I2 and I3. So how many items they have to purchase? I1 and I2, I3 purchased by the two people. I1, I2, I5 is purchased by the two people. Only this is only we have to consider. And finally you can get that supplementary count is two. Uh, I1, I2, I3 or I1, I2 and I5 that is the minimum supplementary count is two. So now this is the item, frequent item set is I1, I2, I3 is the first frequent item set. And second one is the I1, I2, I5, I5 is the another frequent item set. So based on that, you have to combine the, all items you have to represent it as one box. Now we have to, uh, keep it over there in uh, uh, 
in shopping malls automatically the customers usually they have to pick and uh, they have to purchase those uh, purchase that uh, items so the, like this way you can represent the frequent item sets uh, this type of algorithm is called as a priori algorithm a priori algorithm this is the a priori algorithm along with the examples so finally have to pruning that is the i1 i2 i3 joining steps and pruning steps finally after pruning you can get the two item sets one is the i1 i2 i3 and the second one is the i1 i2 i3 so now this is the consider you have there as the after pruning this is the final you can get that values this is the uh, a priori algorithm this is a very simple algorithm Easily you can understand. First is joining, and second is pruning. This is the uh, this is simply call it as uh, uh, a priori algorithm. So see here uh, in a priori algorithm, what are the rules and regulations for the association rules for the frequent item set, support count, and by the support count of E. And it's kind of confidence to pay fifty percent, twenty percent. So confidence association rules also you have to consider. And the second type of algorithm is the priori algorithm. Is the free growth algorithm. This is a very important. This is another type of algorithm you have to use for the frequent item sets. Frequent item set a priori algorithm has uh, simply you can say that a pattern growth approach for the mining frequent item sets. And previously, a priori algorithm approach for the mining frequent item sets. This one is the pattern growth approach for the mining frequent items or a function growth. Uh, Uh, FP algorithm simply you can, that is the FP growth algorithm you have to use finding the frequent item set without candidate generation. Now see this uh, diagram will show uh, this is the frequent. Uh, see this diagram will show. uh first item that is item 2 item 1 item 3 item 4 and item 5 uh the how many counts supplementary count 76662 what are the node links i2 is 7 is uh, 7 will be added is the null uh i1 i4 you have to consider i7 to i4 uh, that is i3 and i4 So here you have to draw the diagram. Uh, it's a supplementary counts node links. You have to connect it similar to the uh, single link list. Uh, how you have to uh, linking you have to one node to another node. Similar manner. If here you have to FE tree registered compressed uh, compressed frequent pattern information. So here uh, the conditional pattern pairs and conditional FE tree. You have to uh, frequency. You have to generate it, and finally you can get the uh, supplementary count uh, frequent pattern information. Uh, see here, this is the diagram which shows uh, step by step process of the minimum uh, the five FP tree by the creating conditional sub pattern basis uh, items and uh, it, uh, patterns generated. How many patterns you have to generate it? Uh, see here continuously. Uh, Here only finally you can get the two patterns uh, that is the I one and I two uh, and I five and uh, I one and I two and uh, I three you have to consider here uh, I one and I two and I three that is the first one and I one and I two and I five is the second one you have to represent the uh, Uh, that is the FP growth algorithm. These are the two algorithms that we uh, have to use the most frequent pattern item sets. So 
so everyone must uh, complete the uh, assignments so that is the five questions five uh, in each question you have the a and b both we have to consider uh, this uh, this uh, subject is related to the research oriented so uh, everyone must uh, prepare uh, their own uh, assignments then only easily you can understand this subject so we'll continue in next class uh, once you have to uh, this one you have to complete it in next class we will continue the minimum and closure to maximum patterns uh, of frequent item search mining methods pattern evaluation methods to discuss in next class